Father, we want to thank you for tonight. We bless you. We magnify you that you are in charge of our meeting tonight. We ask you to please speak to us. We ask you to please help us. We ask you to have mercy on us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. So, brethren, we bless God for to this evening. Um, we have one or two questions that I want us to take. Then if any of us have questions in the live program, you indicate by pressing the signal button on your, to raise your hand on Telegram. And at the appropriate time, we will, um, allow you to ask your question. So let's start with the questions that, uh, I have currently. Number one is in all you have discussed, I can see that we need to hear God, but I can't hear God clearly. What do I need to do? Now, to answer that question, I will want to refer us back to the beginning of all the discussions we have had, where mercy has made, met everyone. Everyone in the Bible that had an encounter with mercy had the ability to see him or hear him. Um, starting from Abraham, he was able to hear God when he says, leave your family and follow me. Um, David was able to uh, receive from God. And um, every other person, even, um, what's his name? Brother Paul. Brother Paul, despite the fact that he was fighting God, he was killing Christians, had the opportunity to hear God. Now, God speaks. God is speaking. He, he speaks. But there are some errors that we have had in today's Christendom that has confused us about the speaking of God. Number one, we were made to know that certain individuals are specially anointed to hear from God and um, they are the oracle of God for this generation. And that is a false representation of the gospel. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 and 18, that on the last days I will pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. So that erroneous belief that certain men are anointed to hear God. Certain men have the grace to hear God. That erroneous teaching made many of us look up to fellow human beings as the oracle of God and we believe that God cannot speak directly to us. That is a fallacy. Also in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, it says God who has in time past spoken to us via the prophets and the angels has now begun to speak to us via his son Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also told us that um, he is going, but he will send the comforter who will guide us in all things. He didn't say that I'm going to send prophet to you again who will guide you. He said I will send Holy Spirit who is will be poured out to everyone. So you have the access to hear God personally. And usually what you will now need brethren for is just to confirm so that you will not be because God's voice is a still small voice. It could be very faint. Sometimes you'll be confused. Is it God that is speaking or me that is thinking? <laughs> because you will not hear an audible voice in your hair. The way God speaks, he speaks to the heart. He doesn't speak to your physical hair. It's your inner mind hair that will hear him. So the times I've heard God speak to me, it's not that I heard one voice saying, Femi, this is your God. And maybe the voice will be echoing the way we see it in, uh, in the movies. <laughs> That's not how it works. It works in your heart. It drops an information in your heart that you are not thinking of. And that information is consistent with the Bible. That is God. So some of us, God has been speaking to us, but because we were expecting an audible voice, and because one prophet came and said he heard God audibly, sort of. When he said he heard God audibly, it's not necessarily that he heard the voice of a human being speaking to his hair. God does not speak via 
the human stuff unless he has spoken to the art of a human being to come and speak to you but if god wants to speak to you he speaks directly to your heart so to hear god is for him to speak to your heart and by the time you check after a while of hearing god speaking to your heart after a while you will get used to the voice of god that anywhere you are that god speaks you are now used to that voice it takes time to get used to the voice of God. It takes time. And that's why you need to cut off a lot of things to hear God. You need to cut off a lot of things. You need to cut off, reduce the number of time you spend with television, with social media, with human beings, and go and be spending time with your Bible. And little by little, you start getting the stronger voice of God in your heart. So back to the question. Yes, in order to obtain mercy, you must be able to hear God. Because he must be able to speak to you. In all things that we have said now, in all the teachings of mercy that we have given, there is the element of you having a relationship with your God and hearing from him. And like I said before, I need to disabuse our mind that it is not only special human beings that have been selected to hear God. Every one of us is created to have a relationship with our maker. So um, uh, there is one special man of God that used to prophesy. There is one special man of God that has special gifts. Uh, I want to let you know that God can speak directly to you. That even when the special man of God is speaking, God will be talking to your heart and telling you, don't mind him. <laughs> this one that he's saying is the one that he's saying it physically. I didn't tell him to say this. And when you're speaking, the man of God, God will tell you, okay, listen to him. I am the one speaking to him now. I just gave him a message for you. So I want you to understand that very clearly. There is something I used to do before when I was still getting to know the voice of God very well and I, I didn't understand it very well. I used to sit in front of my television uh, watching Pastor Deboe preach and I would be telling God, okay, in the next five minutes, that thing that you told me, let him confirm it. And uh, at the beginning, because my faith was just growing, God will now speak to him. He will just say, okay, God said I should tell somebody, what well, that thing that I'm that God is speaking to me about, He will repeat it for me. So I used, usually I used to call Pastor Debbie my personal prophet, so that when I want to confirm, I listen to him. But if he's speaking, I, I don't take it as my final instruction. Despite the fact that I take him as my personal prophet, I don't take his instruction as final. I will see as God, oh yeah, speak to me, confirm you also to, the way you confirm what I want, what you are telling me to him, confirm what you are telling him to me. Why? Because God has access to every one of us. So I hope you understand, you need to be able to hear God in order to obtain full mercy from Him. Now, if you have not been hearing God, it's very simple. It's just for you to go to God in prayers. And don't take it as a as an empty prayer. You know, many of us, when we want to pray to God to hear God, we, we just pray one small prayer and we go. But when you are praying for provisions, when you are praying for healing, when you are praying for a matter, you will fast, you will pray. Three days you are still on that matter. But when it's time to hear God, you just pray five minutes prayer and say, God, nah, what are you doing now? Talk to me. No, you have to make it a matter of importance. God is not our mate. God is not a human being. <laughs> He's the creator. So you, you are the one that is benefiting from hearing him. He's not the one benefiting from you hearing him. It is you that will benefit if the creator of heaven and earth starts speaking to you. So you have to be ready to sacrifice, to pray, to do all things possible. Like I even tell some sisters, you have to just throw away that hearing. And anything that is, you have any foreign object in your ear, throw it away. And say, God, I sacrifice. I want to hear you. Brethren, the best thing that could happen to any one of us is to hear God. The best thing that could happen to any one of us is to hear God. Even the Holy Spirit prayer house that we have today, and with um, uh, all of us connecting everywhere we are, it is just because God helped me to begin to hear Him. If I did not hear Him, I would not even collect the name. I won't know when to start. I won't know what program to do. Many of the prophecies that is coming, I won't be able to give it because I won't be able to hear. It's just because I can hear. And I'm not special. There's nothing special about me. We all have the same access to the same God. I am with, honestly, um, I, I thank God for my wife. There was a time when she always wait for me to hear. Then she will now say, ah, thank God, God has spoken to my husband. And I told her it doesn't work that way. You are not helping my ministry. You have to be able to hear. 
And today, when God spoke to me, and I'm still dragging my feet as a man, God will go and speak to her. She will come and say, God said I should tell you that he told you this and you have not done it. I'll say, hey, what a wonderful God. Now, I am no more a special man of God to you. I'm just your nine brother. You two, you are a sister. I hear God, you hear God. So, to access mercy, to, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a talkative. Now, to answer the question, yes, to access mercy, you need to hear God. Everybody had God. David had God. Saul had God. Boy, came Paul. Peter had God. Um, uh, Abraham had God. Elijah had God. All of them, everyone that found mercy had God. If you cannot hear God, or you are not hearing clearly, or you are hearing once in a blue moon, hey, your being able to capture the mercy might be difficult. So you need to hear God. So uh, you need to go to God in prayers and set aside time to pray to hear God. When I was praying my prayer, I actually went to the new auditorium of the Redeemed Church then, when it was still new. It was, there was bush all around. And I lied on the floor and said, Father, I know there are snakes passing here. They will bite me and I will die. And the reason why I've died is because you refuse to speak to me. I can't hear your voice. I kept shouting. I kept screaming. I was like a madman. I wanted to hear God. Finally, he spoke to me. So God will speak to you if you really desire. The Bible says that those that seek him will find him. Those that seek him endlessly, that diligently seek him. So I want to advise us to seek him concerning our ears. We will hear God and we'll be able to obtain mercy. The next question I have is this. Brother Femi, are you against us paying tight? I actually been expecting that question. <laughs> okay. Um like I said, hearing God is very important, is very key in this. And um I am not against you giving to God. I can never be against you giving to God. But I do not subscribe to you giving because you are under the law. Because Christ came to deliver us from under the law. So we cannot go back to the law that Christ came to deliver us again. It doesn't work. If you hold on too tight as a law, then you should also bring a ram to the altar. And when your child disobey you, they will shout outside and stone them to death. Because those are part of the laws. <laughs> That Moses gave. And I know that, yes, Abraham gave one tenth to the king of Salem. And um, as I then there was no law. But Abraham also uh, built temples. Before even Jesus, uh, before God told this, uh, Israelites how to build temple, Abraham has been building temple. So, and he's not the only one building, building temple. The idol worshippers around were also building temple. The idol worshippers were also giving one tent. It was a culture that they just had to entrench and make into a law. What Moses did was look around, look at the culture, and convert it to law. Remember that Moses also gave the law of uh, divorce. And even before Moses gave that law, divorcement has been happening. But um, it doesn't really be, it's not really the perfect will of God. So, um, there was no perfection in the Old Testament until Jesus came. And when Jesus came, Jesus never, as if, if tithe was so important, such a thing that if you do not follow it, you are going to go to hell. Then Jesus will not spend three and a half years, think about everything and skip that one. It's not possible. I know that um, some of... Uh, 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 our elders in the church has become zealous because they have projects they want to do and they need money to finance it and um, the only way they can get that money was to some of I would maybe say scare some of us to pay money but they weren't supposed to do that what they were supposed to do is teach us what Jesus taught, taught us give and give sacrificially according to how God has blessed you that's the teaching that we are supposed to have because that was what Jesus said. Jesus never um, preached tight. If it was so important that without tight you are going to go to hell, then Jesus would have preached tight. And you know, Jesus is now the fulfillment of the law. So I am afraid that if 
And Jesus told the, uh, the, the, his disciples that unless your righteousness is greater than that of the Pharisees, you will not be delivered, you will not uh, be saved, you will not see heaven, you will not make it to heaven unless your righteousness exceed that of the uh, of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So the Pharisees and Sadducees, they know how to measure their 10% and give it to God. That is their righteousness. Now yours must exceed their own. It must be beyond their own. So uh, I, I believe that paying 10% is your entrance into giving to God. That's your beginning. That is for a person that cannot hear God that does not have a relationship with God, you're just becoming born again and you're trying to give something. But even, even then, in those days, those who gave their life to Jesus Christ and became born again, they didn't give 10%. They don't. What they do is that God takes over their lives and begins to demand of them what he wants and they have no choice but to give it. But because we have, um, we have bread and butter Christianity that is taking us nowhere, uh, we have a Christianity where we now have one man of God and every other person is a follower. And nobody is hearing from God again. We are just waiting for that one man to tell us what God said when we are supposed to have a personal relationship with God. So the one man, if he says anything, we just believe it and we believe we have fulfilled God, uh, the, the righteousness of God. And it's dangerous. Uh, it should be dangerous to die and God says you didn't give anything to him. And why? He said, but God, I was paying my tithe. And he said, no, I wanted more than that, but he did not hear me. And that's why that takes us back to what I started with. Your ability to hear God. It's not that Brother Femi says so, so I will be giving 45%. No, it doesn't work that way. It is you being able to hear your God and say to him according to how he wants of you. That is just all I am teaching. I'm not a... I'm not against giving. It's important. You can't even be a Christian without giving. It's not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> because you are supposed to be like Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He gave his life. So, you know, and so as a Christian, too, the, the next thing you give is give your life. But as Paul said, if one person died for us, then we are all dead. So if Jesus died for us, we have all died. He gave his life for us. We must give our life for him. So I am not coming against you giving. But I am saying that we should follow Jesus. Jesus is the final authority on all this. Um, when the Holy Spirit was teaching me this, uh, he told me that, is it possible that on the last day, and they showed me my result, and they say, I did not give well. Can I say, ah, come my general overseer, he's the one that said 10%, I must give 10%. He said, is it possible? I said, it's not possible, it is me and you alone. He said, exactly. So if it is going to me, if it's going to be me and you alone on the judgment day, then why don't you hear from me? Why don't you take your final instructions from me? The church has the tithing program to finance the church, but that's because the church also did not have faith that Christ can provide for the church. So the church now has a method of collecting money. We have now generated offerings and tithes and this and that, first fruits. We have to wake up all the Old Testament ways of collecting money just to um, have a structured way of making money in the church. Unfortunately also, it has made the church so rich that the church now embark on some projects that you begin to wonder, did Christ send you this? Is this what we are sent to do now? But because we have the money and money is a God, money is a spirit. Once you have it, you will spend it. You have to go and look for one error or the other. And uh, so, um, that doesn't really make, that is what God is store for. So, in this group, like I said, uh, we don't have uh, any other uh, law except the Holy Spirit. And whatever Jesus teaches us is final. So, I'm not against you giving to church. I'm not against you giving to ministry. I'm not against you giving to men of God last thing. I'm, I'm, that's not what we are planning to do. What we want to do is that you will be able to hear God and you will be the one directing. So if God now says, Sister so so, so, so give me 10%, please, you give God what he asks for. And if he says, Sister so, so, so give me the all, <laughs> I beg you, give. If he says, ah, you know, you are worshiping in the church ABC, go and give to the church DDD. You have no choice. You just have to obey. He is the one that will judge you. Your tight card in the church will not be presented in heaven. 
your record of giving in the church will not be recorded in heaven. It's not your, what will get, grant you access to heaven. It is your obedience to God that will grant you access to heaven. So, if you are protecting your tithe card, ah, if I didn't pay it now, pastor will call me. <laughs> that is not Christianity. You. That is uh, that is man worship. That's a different uh, religion on its so Christianity is the worship of God. But it's so beautiful that God can gather a million people and direct them. Without the uh, general overseer or the pastor uh, breathing fire upon them, God will be directing people how to do it. And finally, on this matter, let's check um, the new church, the New Testament church, where the Bible says they had all things in common. Ananias and Sapphira sold their land. God was not expecting 10% from them. God was not even expecting 50% from them. What he wanted on that sale was 100%. And because they came to lie and present 50% as 100%, God killed them. This is not Old Testament. This is after Jesus had come with Brother Peter when the anointing was fresh. And when we go back to uh, when the Pentecostal uh, so started in America when it started in Nigeria it never started with tight it started with people giving hearing God and coming with what God has asked them to bring so the church never laughed when the church needs a boss God will speak to somebody who will bring the boss when the church needs food so God will speak to somebody and he will bring food so God was the one in charge but today we have removed the hand of God and we have set our own plan of how to make money so we now you know, we even suspend pastors that did not make enough money. We sack pastors. We transfer them. We write queries to pastors. We now have uh, auditors. We'll be auditing tight <laughs> and uh, collections. We have just removed the hand of God from it. We need to go back to the early stage. How Jesus handed it over to Peter. And how Peter handed it to the world. So, I am not against your paying tight. I am not against your giving. I am just saying... Let us give according to the instruction that God gives to you personally. You're, on that day, there is no special heaven for members of the redeemed, another special heavens for members of deeper life, another special heavens for members of uh, Christ Embassy. No, 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 no. There is all denominations were never created uh, to go to heaven. They are of this earth and they will end on this earth. There is no special place for uh, MFM members in heaven. MFM is not recognized in heaven. It is a man's established organization for earth. Redeem is, has no place in heaven. It is for earth. When rapture comes, there is no place that redeem. You not say I redeem as raptured. <laughs> redeem is not a human being. <laughs> Deeper life is not a human being. So it's, it's, it ends here on earth. What will go to happen there is that we are all going to line up. Then we are going to be checked according to how you obeyed God. So, uh, I am of this denomination. This is what our papa said. Oh, sorry. It's not, it's not a papa matter now. This is, we are trying to reconcile you back directly to your God. Hear your God. What is he asking of you? Where is he sending you to give? May it not be that you've given so much and at the end of the day, your name is not even in the book of life. I pray. That God will direct our giving in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, before I take the last questions, I just want to ask, does anybody ask any question? So that you just signify by raising your hand with your application there. And I will give you the, the chance to ask your question before I go to the final question that I have here. Okay. Since there is no hand going up, I will take my final question here. Okay, how do I access mercy permanently? You had an opportunity to, to die, and mercy spoke for you. A lot of people die and doesn't have access to same mercy. How do I have access permanently to mercy? Um, this is a dicey question. Um, I believe that the day you start, you see God as your only source, you will have access to mercy. The day you see God as your only source, you will have this permanent access to mercy. 
um, Jesus gave a criteria for mercy. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, and they shall obtain mercy. Now, the first person, excuse me, the first person you are to be merciful to is God himself. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Before you become merciful to man, the first person you are supposed to be merciful to is God. It's Jesus himself. And let me explain that quickly now. The Bible says that for those that have known the truth and still go back to commit sin and iniquity, they are like persons that is nailing Jesus afresh to the cross. So every time we know the truth, that is what the Bible says. But because we want to please ourselves, we want to please our denomination, we want to please the people around us, we go against what the Bible said. Then we are nailing Jesus to the cross again. And you cannot be nailing Jesus to the cross in that cruel matter, manner and expect to, ex to get mercy from him. It's not possible. So he said, blessed are the merciful. So you first have to be merciful unto Jesus. Every time you know the truth, as a woman, you know, you are, it, it, it's not, um, uh, it's not hidden. You know what Christ expects of you. You know that submission is key. You know that dressing clean is key. You know that that clothes you wear can easily turn the eyes of men. You know. We don't need to teach you about it. But because eh, today our, our church does not talk about it again. They didn't really uh, condemn it. Our pastor does not. You, so you are, trying, you are looking for an excuse to cover. But you know what the Bible expects of you. What have you done? You are nailing Christ to the cross. How do you expect to get mercy from him? You are a brother. You are in business. You are you are doing things. You are a brother. You are deceiving sisters up and down. In the name of God told me, God told me. And you are doing all kind of funny things. You know what you are doing. You, we don't need to preach to you. Many of the preaching we are preaching, just to remind you what you already know. But you decide in your heart that I'm going to go ahead and nail Jesus to the cross again. It will be difficult to access mercy. It will be difficult to access because the first person you have to show mercy to is Jesus. And once you're able to show mercy to Jesus, naturally, it will be easy to show mercy to human beings. To whom who gives mercy to others will receive mercy. So the access to mercy on your behalf is forced to have mercy on Jesus. Then to have a dialogue with him. I, I at the beginning, even till now, I easily have dialogue. When I pray, I don't pray sanctimonious prayers. It's when I'm praying in the group that you hear say, Father, we bless you, all those kind of prayers. When I'm in personal prayers with God, you will think I'm speaking to a human being. I don't do sanctimonious prayer. I talk to God, my heart and my feeling. I am angry. I go to God and say, God, this person, you know, I am so hungry. I am so hungry. How can this person do this? Then he will start telling me, why should you be angry? See this, see this. I say, okay, God, forgive me. You see now, eh? See me, I got angry again. And I'm, I'm not supposed to get angry. What do I need to do? I have a discussion with him. When I think I failed him, I don't pray sanctimonious. I go to him, I open up. God, see me. See what I have done. You, if we hear, that's why I like praying in the night alone on my prayer walk. So I can see anything I feel like praying. I just have that relationship with him. I don't see him as, though I respect him as my God, as my creator. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say it. I don't, Treat him like a third party. Or I need to go through somebody before I see him. I see him as my, as, I treat the Holy Spirit as my friend. So we're able to have that discussion. He's able, his spirit will box into my thoughts and speak to me. I believe that that is the level he's expecting of us to have a relationship with him. That is all he wants. Just a relationship with you. And once you're able to have that relationship, you'll be able to access mercy. Brethren, Jesus speaks regularly. Honestly, I thought the way they presented Jesus to me in those days, I believe he's one so, ah, difficult person, difficult to even hear him speak. Ah, 
will be difficult. So I need, we needed to go for special programs and hear special men of God who will now tell us what God said because they've gone for 40 days fasting before they can hear God. That's what I've always thought. Until I cried to him personally, I discovered that he's supposed to speak to me as a human being. So I went to meet him and said, if you are to be speaking to a human being, why are you hiding from me? And he started speaking. But then, uh, my wife said to stop using the word. But there is no other word to uh, describe it. Except I say that Christ is like a talkative. Who <laughs> speaks like a talkative? He talks. Sometimes two hours, he's still talking. All the messages I preach here, I might preach it for 20 minutes, but with me and the Holy Spirit, it might take us three hours. Continuous talking. Continuous talking. Continuous showing me this. Show me that. Give me this scripture. Open that scripture for me. Open that scripture for me. And explain to me why. Because he knows that I've been confused. I've been following the general knowledge. I don't, I'm, I've, I've not been studying my Bible. I've just been following what anything they say. But now it's now opening the Bible and showing me everything. So it takes time, but that relationship helps me to access mercy. And what so I am also telling you that it's so easy for you to access mercy. Honestly, it's very easy. Just create a relationship between you and God, and you will be able to access mercy. So those are the answers to the question I have had today. I will just do a short recap, then we'll go into prayer. Number one, it is almost impossible to access mercy if you cannot hear God. It's almost impossible because he needs to speak to you. And sometimes you need to hear God on a matter. And maybe Brother Femi, who supposed, who God wanted to use to send it to the group, has forgotten his phone somewhere and gone for a prayer walk and God needed to speak to you urgently. He needs to be able to break protocol and speak to you. You don't have to wait for the next church convention when we all go or the next Sunday before you hear God. No, on some urgent matters, you need to obtain mercy immediately. You're about to enter a bus that will have accidents. You need to be able to hear mercy. I heard of a man who entered the plane. He has sat down when God said, what are you doing in this plane? He said, ah, I have a program. God said, what are you doing in this plane? He said, okay, with God questioning what I'm doing in this plane. Uh, please, let me come down. Say, ah, we'll live without you. Uh, leave. God has been questioning me, what am I doing inside this plane? So I'm not supposed to be here. So he sat down. I said, God, okay, I've gotten out. And God said, no problem. And God did not talk again. He was at the airport when he heard that that plane has crashed and everyone on board died. You need to be able to receive for mercy at the point where you need it. And you don't need to have a special man of God somewhere. You should be able to access him. So whatever is going to take you in prayers, be ready to give it. That God, if it's to die while praying, that we die while praying, like just like I prayed, I want to hear you. I must hear you. Clearly. I want to develop the grace to hear you. Then pick your Bible and start reading. As you are reading, you will begin to hear. Like what well, God did something for me once, when I was just beginning to hear him and I was not too clear. A thought just came and said, open your Bible to Susu place. I opened it. I read it. I heard another Bible verse again. I opened it. Ah! They are saying the same thing. I heard another Bible verse. I opened it again. Ah! They are still saying the same thing. And God was speaking to me. He was, you know that God is the author of the Bible. Let me give you an example. Like God says, open the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 5. You read it. And I say, okay, go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 5. You read it. And I tell you, no, okay, go to Revelation chapter 4. You are just taking the same chapter, the same verse from different books in the Bible and they were all the same meaning. That was like, God, you are the author of the Bible. But I was able to recognize this voice. I said, oh, so that thought that used to come out of the blues is God. Okay, I am recognizing his voice. And that was how I began to recognize his voice little by little. So brethren, you also need to be able to hear God. You need to be able to hear from him, not through somebody. I, my, my job will now be to be confirming to you. So when you say, brother friend, I think God is leading me this way. I will say, okay, let me to go and pray. Oh, okay, God has confirmed it that that's what he's leading you to. Fantastic. That is wonderful. So when you face a problem later in the future, you will say, hey, God, no, it's not, it's not that useless, but that's what me to go and do, to go and start selling clothes. Eh? 
See now, I'm starting selling the clothes. Nothing here. Nobody is buying. Ah, that useless for that. No, you will not say that. You will not rub my name inside because we both hate God. You will be patient enough to wait till the day your breakthrough will come. It's beautiful to hear God. So to access mercy, you must be able to hear God. And I also replied that I am not against tithe and offering. I'm not against giving to God. It is impossible to be a Christian without giving. But what we are saying is that you need to be able to hear God to know exactly what you should give to him, what he requires of you. So we're going to go to prayers now. I think the most important thing from tonight's meeting is the grace to hear God clearly. Some of us hear him in dreams, and that is wonderful. But like I used to say, <laughs> maybe somebody is standing in front of you and asking you a question. Will you say, let me go and sleep first? So I can have a dream, I'll come back and come and tell you. No, you should be able to hear God immediately at that point. So uh, whatever level you are hearing, it is not enough. We want to hear further. I have the testimony of Pastor Deboye, who said that he was, in a, he was he went to bush to go and ease himself. And a TV was put in front of him. And uh, he was seeing something written on the television. Me, I have not gotten to that stage. So I am still crying to God. I can see. I can hear, but I want to hear, I want, I want to be watching TV too spiritually. <laughs> so, uh, we all now, we go to God in prayers. To the next level you want to go in your hearing. If you're not hearing at all, that is dangerous. You need to go to God and say, whatever it will take tonight, I want to begin to hear you. If you are hearing faithfully, God, I don't want to hear faithfully, I want to hear clearly. And if you are hearing clearly, Father, I want to hear clearer. <laughs> Anyhow, so let's just go to God in prayers tonight. Then I will pray for us. Just talk to God and say, Father, I want to hear you. I just want to hear you. If I cannot hear you, I cannot obtain mercy. Mercy speaks. Mercy speaks. A deaf man, especially deaf man, cannot hear mercy. When mercy is given instruction, a spiritually deaf person will not hear. I mean, there was a time there was an instruction that came that there is a woman that God is going to give her a baby, but it's not within our ovulation period because Satan has tampered with an ov our ovulation period. So the time she thought it's our ovulation period was not actually our ovulation period. It had been tampered with. The time she thought she's safe is the ovulation period. So God told her to go and meet her husband in that time that is not our ovulation period. And she got pregnant. You need to be able to hear God to obtain mercy. Can you cry to God, Mercy, I want to hear you. I just want to hear you. Mercy, I want to hear you. I just want to hear you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Shall I pray for us? Father God, we thank you for tonight. The summary of all you have told us tonight is that we need to be able to hear you. We need to be able to have a relationship with you. We need to be able to receive information from you and you listening to us at every point in time. Without being able to hear you, our Christian race is not complete. It gets even dangerous that if we cannot hear you, we cannot get to heaven. If we cannot hear you, ha, our heaven is not even sure. Because a bastard who cannot hear his father cannot enter into heaven. Father, please, we beg you tonight. Whatever it will take, oh God, heal our spiritual ears in Jesus' name. Grant us the grace to be able to hear you very clearly in the mighty name of Jesus. Grant us the grace to be able to receive information from you directly in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, there is no superstar among us. We are all hungry for more of you. Please, take us to become like you in Jesus' name. Draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Reconcile us with you. Open our ears, let us hear. Open our eyes, let us see. Our discerning spirit, let it come alive in Jesus' name. Create in us an hunger to hear you permanently. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Please, 
Don't stop the prayer here. If that is all you're going to do, honestly, if that is all, I'll be so happy that God is speaking to you. There's a sister among us, she's, she worships in the Catholic Church, and um, God helped her by the grace of God. She got linked to the Holy Spirit prayer. So this is like the first uh, Pentecostal sort of, even though I don't, I don't know if, if we are Pentecostal, I don't know what we are saying. I think we are, <laughs> we are apostolic. I think we are more apostolic than Pentecostal. Because Pentecostal is becoming Pentecostal nowadays. So, um, but she listened to the message once and decided that God, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. And the first time God spoke to her, she actually sent me a message and said, I think I'm going crazy. I just heard this. I don't know where I heard it from. It just came to my heart. And I wrote it down. And I told her that is God speaking to you. And from then on, I told her, go back, just like Samuel did, and say, God, I want to hear more. And God started giving us specific information. As in dates. Dates that have not been selected. You tell her that these are the dates. So these are the dates they want to choose. And this, this is the date this will happen. This one will happen so so they, I mean, brethren, there is nothing sweeter than when God Almighty speaks to you. When God Almighty begins to speak to you, honestly, honestly, some of the places we go, or some of the people we exalt and say, wow, oh my father. <laughs> when God begins to speak to you, you will suddenly discover that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I've been making mistakes all this while. I've been making mistakes all this while. Yeah, and it is, it is, I don't know. It's just the best thing that can happen to a human being, that your creator is speaking to you. Then you know you're on your way to heaven. You are very sure that, yes, I have just entered the pathway that will take me to heaven. The reason why most of the charlatans and the nonsense that is happening in the church today is because we can no longer hear God. So the man of God on the altar, in quote, is now giving instruction according to his free will. Because why? He has been cut off from hearing God concerning his life. He might be hearing prophecies for other people and it's coming to pass. So, but for himself, he's now deaf. I pray that God will not make you deaf in Jesus' name. And if you have heard before and your stubbornness have made you deaf, I pray that mercy will consider you for a reconnection tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. So please continue your prayers. God, I want to hear you clearly. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in the presence of God.